Hello everyone. Happy Friday. I am trying to do my very first live. So I'm going to just see what this is like. I got a new piece of technology. So I'm trying to test out my webcam, see if it's working, um, see if the connections are right. And it is a beautiful Friday here in Atlanta. So I am very much in feeling the energy, um, feeling the high vibes myself. And so I wanted to just pop on for a little bit and see if anybody else is feeling the shift of energy as well. So I can't tell if anyone is here looking or not, but we shall see. I'll give it a few minutes to see if anyone joins me. <laughs> so I'm looking for the chat logs. Um, let's see here. Okay, it looks like, it looks like we're okay and we are going. And so I'm just going to sit here and continue to be in the vibration. I'm waiting for a couple of friends that I asked to join me to pop in um, to see if they can test it out for me. Um, as you know, my name is Joelle and I'm the vibrarian. So my goal is to elevate, enlighten, and empower with information, uh, experiences, anything that I can think of and be connected to in order to elevate and shift the frequency of our consciousness currently. I am part of the ascension and uh, by that I mean that I am helping to contribute to this massive uh, awakening of humanity that is happening right now. I see Dr. Tracy Hey has popped on. Thank you, sis, for joining. How are you out in California? It's like there's a bit of a time delay between what I'm saying <laughs> and what I'm uh, go, um, seeing on my screen. So it's a little disconcerting. I saw you gave me some thumbs up. So, you know, we're from coast to coast, spreading the light from East Coast and Georgia all the way to California today. Um, and Dr. Tracy, if you don't know, she is an awesome healer and light worker. She's been on my programs before. You can check her out at Open Heart World. She is dealing with the layers of the heart and helping to heal those wounds that our heart needs to reveal to us. I've done a lot of work with her and I'm very uh, pleased to say that it's been very successful for me. So please check her out. I'm so appreciative of you popping on today. You know, I love to call the community of people that I work with and that I've come across the Good Vibe Tribe. Of course, I don't have a trademark on that. Everybody is using it because that's the consciousness that we have right now. And so, uh, you know, but it really speaks to the fact when they say birds of a feather flock together. Uh, that's basically the same thing that, you know, your frequency attracts to people of like frequency. And I love you too, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, your frequency attracts those to you that are of similar or dissimilar resonance. Now, that's not to say that we don't attract people to us that... Um, or that we're not around energies that we do not necessarily resonate with. It's up to us to manage our interactions, right? So that's not to say that we're not going to find ourselves in circumstances where we might find that we feel uncomfortable or we're not resonating with the people there. That's just really an indicator. And what is happening is our bodies are shifting and changing. We're becoming a, a more finely tuned instrument in terms of what we are able to experience and understand about our environment around us. So what that means is uh, before where you might have felt like, uh, you know, when you went into work, you had no problems with work. And then pretty soon you start to realize um, after you've gone through some awakening and shift, you start to realize, well, 
I don't feel good when I'm around this certain group of people at work. And then you recognize the fact that maybe they're gossiping or maybe they have like pessimistic outlooks and they really don't like being there. And all they talk about is negativity. And you find that being around them then begins to make you uncomfortable and you no longer associate with them. And you find yourself gravitating towards a different group of people who then have a different frequency. That is the kind of information that I'm talking about. Whereas before you were oblivious to it, now you're aware and you feel it very keenly. So the more that we get in touch with our truth and our self and our bodies, the more we are going to be sensitive to things that we were previously not aware of. Um, that can happen with things like TV, being able to tolerate TV shows, being able to tolerate certain kinds of music, you may find that it just really either irritates you and makes you feel aggravated after a while of trying to expose yourself to it. Hey, Trey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm ready for homecoming. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, as I'm saying, you know, our vibe attracts our tribe. So I think that it's beautiful because when you're around a group of people who you enjoy and who are uh, doing the same thing that you like to do, who are um, evolving and uh, choosing to participate in activities and experiences that are similar to yourself, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, we always have an opportunity to move ourselves from point A to point B. We don't need to be stuck in the energy of uh, things that we are uncomfortable with. We don't need to consider ourselves stuck. And a lot of times we do feel like we have a, um, <laughs> yes, yes, right? So that talking on the radio, for those of you who are chatting on the live, I appreciate the interaction. That's really my purpose of this is to have a conversation with you all. Um, you know, your tolerance for certain things, certain foods even, um, you know, you will not be able to eat them anymore. And a lot of times it makes us uncomfortable because then it pulls us away from our habits and patterns. And that can be very, uh, yes, yeah, see you at homecoming. I'm excited too. I keep seeing the promotions out there. And Trey, I do want to talk with you more about your um, CBD healing that you are involved with. I've been looking at your shares on Instagram and the things that you post about all the positive health and healing things that have happened in your life as a result of your bringing that into your routine and diet is very uplifting. So I will be circling back to you for a conversation about that. Um, for those who are also into the body healing, um, I'm hoping to be able to connect you for a conversation, uh, to be able to spread some knowledge and information about the CBD and healing. Hi, Dawn. Thank you for popping in on the live today. Um, I appreciate you being here. This is just a real casual conversation. So those of you who catch this on the replay, understand that it is what it is. It's an interactive conversation. So I'm kind of just talking to the community who's joining me. We're talking about vibration. We're talking about how to recognize when you're going through a shift in your energetic signature and then how to, you know, look to riding the wave of that instead of fighting it again, fighting against it. So many times we try to hold on to friends we try to hold on to jobs and things that are not resonating with us. And a lot of times the reason why we're doing that is because of fear. And the fear comes up when we look at what am I going to do to change my income? If I don't like my job and I'm not resonating with the people on it, anymore, the things that I'm called to do, but I don't know what it is that I'm going to do to make money. That could be a very frightening proposition to make a big change that affects you economically. Um, what am I going to do if my friend for 20 something years, I'm just not really liking our energy when we're together anymore. What am I going to do um, if I have to change that friendship? What is it going to disrupt our whole friend circle? You know, what are the ramifications of that going to be? So it can be something that people put off in terms of going ahead and embracing the change that comes. And what I can tell you is that you can 
do the shift. It's not that it is easy, but it is easier than what you might believe that it's going to be. Fear is like the biggest thing that the matrix uses in order to keep us trapped in patterns where our energy is going towards things that are not actually aligned with our highest and best opportunities. Um, I'm definitely a person who believes and understands and sees that there is a matrix reality that is basically departing us of our energy. That can be of our time, our economics, our emotions. And it's any of those things that are set to pull us into places where we are, you know, we, we work our lives away. We give up all of our time, our mental energy and effort to jobs and that uh, basically cast us aside at the second dime when it benefits them economically. We take time away from our family and friends in order to um, have this American dream. And it puts us in a place where then we have heart uh, failure because we're living a sedentary lifestyle or we're sitting in our car two hours a day or on the train a couple hours a day. Uh, trying to get to this job and then never get home to actually enjoy the house that we're working for. Um, we're, you know, consuming foods and things that are actually making us sick on the inside. So all of this stuff is part of the matrix dynamic that goes into trying to keep us unconsciously contributing the very essence and nature of who we are through our energetic contribution to it. So once you wake up, and you turn around and you begin to say, you know, I'm going to be more conscious about where I invest my energy and that it will cover every level that will cover your personal life, your professional life, your economics, um, your every minute of your awakening and sleeping beingness will absolutely follow into a new paradigm once you begin to be more conscious about what it is you're doing. So one way to do that is to be in the now moment. That means don't just check out and go on autopilot pilot and drive to work every day, not thinking about what you're doing, uh, working through your day, just kind of doing the things that you know to do and then driving home and then eating your dinner and then sitting in front of the TV. And next thing you know, you're going to bed and getting ready for the next day. That would be the epitome of an unconscious existence. So what we can do is like be in the now moment, like uh, Trey said earlier, turn off the radio in the car when you're driving to work. Be still. Don't think about the traffic and the, the traffic jam. Just allow the stillness to be there as you are driving. Whatever comes from your consciousness into your awareness as you're driving, just sit with that. You don't have to ruminate and think about, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do about this? I'm planning and I'm using that time then to run the mental train around the track. No, just be still. Feel the steering wheel. Look at the world around you as you're driving. Observe your thoughts that are coming in as you are, are driving. Just give yourself that space for that kind of higher consciousness to begin to filter into your reality. And you will be amazed at the things that you will reveal to yourself. A lot of times the thing that happens is that we are so distracted from the hustle and bustle that we don't give ourselves time to have that uh, awareness come in from the higher self that will tell you, you know what? We are deeply unhappy. We are bored. We are not feeling like we're being utilized to our fullest potential. Uh, we don't even really like this person anymore. Like those are the kinds of things that will come into your consciousness when you give it space, when you give yourself, your higher self time. And a lot of times we are used to talking to ourselves, like to talk out certain positions, to have the arguments with ourselves, that kind of conversation. And I'm talking about a different kind of awareness that is, say, higher than that, because, of course, we can we're given our mental faculties in order to use them for our protection, our existence, our betterment. But the kind of conversation and connection I'm talking about is really from the heart 
of self through the divine, it comes down to say, it's no argument for when you hear self say, we're unhappy. The argument comes in when we start to say, well, yes, we're unhappy, but what are we going to do about it? We can't really leave the job right now because if we do this, but if you don't do that, then you're going to be so, that's where the talk comes in and that's happening from the mental space, right? But it starts from that awareness that says, my soul, what makes me happy, what gives me joy is not happening right now. The solutions and all that kind of conversation to that, we can worry about that later. We can put that as part of the next process, but giving it the space for that awareness that says, wow, okay, we are unhappy. Let's start by acknowledging our energetic state is not vibrating where we want to be. That alone in that now moment is enough to accept that energy, chew on it, digest it, sit with it. It may take weeks, it may take months, it may take a day, it may take an instant when that's when people walk in and they're like, you know what, I quit, <laughs> you know, or you know what, I'm not talking with you anymore. This is this friendship is not going to continue to work or things like that. That's those kind of sudden aha moments that they talk about when the light bulb goes on. The light is usually so bright that it shines through any doubt and then you don't worry about the consequences of it. You're like, you know what, that aha moment hit and I can't do this anymore. And then you worry about picking up the pieces later. But what you do know is that I could not go another moment existing and doing in the energy that I was experiencing. And so I made the decision, something shifted, the light turned on, and now I am on a different trajectory my timeline so you know today is a virgo new moon new moon of course if you're following astrology and the cycles i'm not an astrologer so let me say i may have things incorrect if anybody has things to change uh you know what i'm saying i absolutely um hey glenda oh i had a lot of people i didn't even see all these here Hey, Wave. Hey, Terry. Glenda, everyone, thank you who's joined me. I'm sorry I missed you. I was not seeing the uh, stream, <laughs> you know, happening with the chat as I was talking. Um, so new moon in Virgo. Virgo um, is an earth sign. Virgo, the new moon, the virgin uh, is the energy of Virgo. And so what I believe is that what we are looking at right now is like the seeds of what we wish to plant and what we wish to manifest. So I'm actually going to be on my YouTube channel a little later today to do a reading. I've been guided to do uh, a message based on uh, the concept of seeds and weeds, seeding and weeding. So um, this is something about going within in tarot, the hermit card, I believe is Virgo. This is all about seeking the inner wisdom, that inner light, that inner divine and separating yourself away from society, away from the hustle bustle so that you can go within to get the clarity of that message, right? So um, my reading that I'm gonna do is about seeding and weeding. And um, my YouTube channel is The Vibrary, that's T. T-H-E-V-I-B-E-R-A-R-Y, okay? And uh, I'm not sure exactly what time I'll be doing the live, but you can always check in. And I want to see what energies want to be brought to our awareness that we want to use to plant our fertile seeds and the things that we want to weed out of our energy so that the soil is appropriate to support the things that we are wanting to nurture to bring forth. Um, I believe very much in conscious intention setting and that I am absolutely creating my reality by what I am growing in, in my life on every given moment. So uh, because I operate under that frequency, then I try to you know, not be accidental about stuff. 
um, even this video today is part of the seed that I want to plant, which is to be more present, to be more forward and connected with people um, by doing live videos, by doing more teaching and more talking and more reading and kind of stepping into a new flow of energy with my mission as the vibrarian and with all the activities that I do through the vibrary to help support the light worker community and bringing their gifts and things forward to all of you um, as well. So this is like part of the seed that I want to plant so that it continues to grow. So I want to, I, my guides were kind of talking with me this morning in my meditative state about seeding and weeding. Um, and one of the key things that we need to understand is that a lot of us know about envisioning and creating, but what we also need to understand is about feeling and creating because a lot of what we do, we get too focused on the vision of it and we leave out the emotional context of it. Um, and so I've had a lot of client readings at um, the Psychic Fair up at the Blue Barn, which is the first weekend of every month. It's an awesome event. If you haven't been there, if you're in Atlanta, come check it out. Um, but um, the message of the, the theme of the last month's readings with everyone was really about, it was over and over again, people who sat with me, the same message wound up coming through is that as you feeleth, so you receiveth, <laughs> to use my Old Testament King James English, <laughs> right? So uh, not as you thinketh, but as you feeleth. So a lot of times what we do is we'll envision our fancy house, our car, our dream reality, and we'll be very specific. You know, I want to have this, I want to have that, and we forget the feeling part. And so when we're making that, I want to have, have, have situation, then we are um, getting what we want and yet we're feeling terrible when we get it or we're not feeling what we thought we would feel when we got it and that was because we were too focused on the vision of what we thought it should look like rather than the feeling of experiencing that which we intend. Hello, Grace. Thank you for joining the live. Thank you, everyone who is here for this. This is my trial balloon. And so I'm so appreciative of everyone who is part of the Good Vibe Tribe today. So the feeling of it, like um, I believe it is fully more important to feel than it is to envision. So by that, I would say that when I'm looking at where I want to live, I am feeling safe when I come in the house. I feel peace. I feel that I am in sanctuary. I love stepping into my home and it brings me great joy to see the environment that I live in. I am able to welcome others into it with the right frequency to share my personal environment and it is filled with all of the experiences that I bring to my reality. Those energies surround me on a constant basis. And I am able to truly be at peace inside of myself. That is more important than saying I want a McMansion with a four car garage and um, 10 cars in the driveway and I want it to be marble tiles and you know a lot of what we do is visioning what we want it to look like right I say let the universe surprise me all I know is I want it to feel a certain way now of course my divine self and creator self know that I love a beautiful bathtub where I can take my long soaks with my crystals in it, have my candles around, all that. So I don't have to write that on my list. I don't have to put that on my vision board. But if there is a picture that embodies the feeling that I feel when I am in my bathtub, then absolutely, I will put that picture on there. Right. Um, so as Tracy says in the chat here, the purpose of the vision is to get you in the feeling place. Absolutely. But because we're in a material focus matrix, a lot of times, oh, excuse me. Let me hold on a second. My phone is my 
computer's telling me my battery is low. One second. Okay. Yes, so the material matrix will fool us into focusing on the material manifestation, not the emotional manifestation, right? So that's the thing we have to remember is that there is a false construct at play. So use vision boards, but use them in the right way, right? So the material attainment will always exceed our expectations because we are limited really by our 3D perspective. And I cannot tell you time and time again how the divine has blown my mind with experiences that I only had, like I said, that smallest seed of an idea of what I wanted to do. And that seed was then grown and manifested in a way that far exceeded anything that I could have ever envisioned for myself at the time and the frequency that I was in. Now, through those experiences, then my ability to envision at a higher frequency has come. And so I'm shifted, but I'm still not able to see all the infinite possibilities that the universe has for me, right? So um, this will be a time really when I do the reading and I'll try to share it over here on Facebook as well, is that I want to make sure that the seeds and the feelings that we need to be aware of are shown from a divine perspective uh, through the reading and the guidance that I will receive and that any emotional things that are weeds and on the garden are brought to the awareness so that I can make sure that it's not going to uh, affect the soil, the emotional soil that I am using in this time of conscious seed planting, if that's making sense to everybody, right? So a lot of times we're operating at a level of awareness only so far. And by tapping in and getting readings and connecting with our higher source, whatever that looks like for you, then we are able to see things that will come broader to help expand us. Because a lot of times we have that blind spot, right? Well, I didn't see that coming. Uh, I didn't realize that that was there. And then next thing you know, it's almost like you plant your seeds of wheat and you didn't realize that there was a corn kernel or two in there because you didn't see it. You didn't have the right tool. You didn't have the right framework. So you didn't realize until the plant starts coming up that you have corn. Not that corn is a weed, but if your intention is for wheat, it's not aligned with your intention. So what we want to do is weed out any things that will be misaligned with what we feel our intention should be. And that's easy for all of us to do because, I mean, we're 3D people, basically living in a, a multidimensional reality experience, and we're still learning how to do all of this, you know? So I think it's like how... Um, how um, in the Matrix, you know, Neo, they were trying to train him in how he should experience the Matrix as he was walking around. And all of it was like unlearning everything that you knew about the reality that you were existing in. So we're in the space of like unlearning and opening and expanding ourselves so that we can navigate better, so that we can see those bullets coming like Neo did when he was fighting Morpheus and he was all of a sudden, you know, doing his little thing, right? Uh, we want to see the ones and zeros dropping out of the matrix. We want to be aware of the ladies in the red dress that are the distraction things. Once you start to see it, then you can navigate the multidimensional reality a lot better. So, I am so appreciative of everyone who has been sitting with me on the live today. Thank you, Wave. Does anybody have any questions or anything that you want to share about your High Vibe Friday? I'm just you know, out here having a great time connecting with everyone and um, stepping into new energy, as I said. So I appreciate everyone who is here to support that. All the little emojis that are popping up and all of the likes and loves and shares. 
Um, I just appreciate everything that I receive in support from uh, the divine, the people who are placed around me, the people who are able to hear and connect with me. I'm grateful for each and every one of you who is giving your energy to this moment because I do believe and affirm that your energy is precious and I don't take lightly that you choose to experience and share that with me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I knew it was a great energy day today, um, so I'm really excited to have been here. I've been on for about a half hour time, flies fast when you're having fun. Um, I definitely, as I said, would uh, refer you to all of the things that I do as the vibrarian, and, and I will make a separate video about this later, but I have podcasts that I do. Uh, one is the Psychic Inside Show. And on that program, I get to interview people who have come through a journey where they have discovered their psychic gifts and abilities and what that has looked like for them. Let me tell you, the stories that I'm hearing and connecting with people, I think I've done over 40 interviews. Um, it is amazing. And there's so many common threads and then so many uncommon experiences even around those common threads. And I consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to have these conversations with people where they are, um, you know, thank you, Trey. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Um, to be able to, for people to talk about their most intimate experiences, which sometimes have been very painful, coming into acceptance that they have these gifts and spiritual things that they um, might have had from birth or from a very young age and what it looked like for them to come into acceptance of that. And then how they're using those gifts and abilities in their lives today, which is uh, beautiful. Um, several of the people who've been on my live today, uh, Glenda Emery was here, Dr. Tracy Johnson, both of them are light workers who I've had on my show. On my Thursday show, um, which is the vibrarian, it is very much conversations like this. Um, I'm either talking about a subject that I find interesting or I have guests on to explain different things. We've talked about the chakra system, um, astral travel, lucid dreaming, past lives. I had a shaman and a hypnotherapist who were on talking about past life experiences with their clients. And that was just super fascinating. All of the shows that I've ever recorded are available on the Viber YouTube channel. You can listen to them on replay. There's nothing to see. There's just a little placeholder. So you can listen to them and they are long. I recognize that, but they're important stories. Luckily, YouTube has a feature now where you can listen in rapid time. So you don't have to think, oh, it's a two hour broadcast. What am I gonna do? I don't have two hours. Put it on in the car, put it on fast speed, <laughs> listen to it. These stories and these lessons and teachings are absolutely amazing. And I find myself re-listening to them as well. I'm going to be launching soon for some, thank you, Dr. Tracy, for posting. Hey, Sarah, how are you doing? My silver sister, Lisa. <laughs> um, all of these uh, things are there for you to pick up. It's like a book. The library is very much a resource center. It's an access portal to the tree of knowledge that we are all embodying. And that's part of my mission is to, as you know, I am a librarian, but I am now the librarian. I'm at a higher frequency of information, uh, <laughs> information delivery. And this is speaking to my heart to be able to pass on these messages and experiences positivity. So if you go to my channel, you can find readings from myself. You can find interviews from my radio programming. Um, I am going to start having different people who are bringing messages to the Vibrary Collective through the channel, because really the Vibrary is, is like a library. You go in and you can find many books about the same subject. So you may find in the Vibrary, there are many people, there may be 10 Reiki healers, there may be 100 shamans, there may be 2,000 psychics eventually, right? But it's a place where you can go and know that the people who are participating in it are part of the same good vibration, the vibrational alignment that I am aligned to. 
these are the people who also resonate with that. And I'm here to support and help them bring their gift to the world. There are workshops coming up. I've got many people who are getting ready to put programming or working in the queue to bring workshops and instructional opportunities for you on things such as astrology, energy healing, Reiki certification, tarot reading, uh, crystal grid development. I mean, it's just a beautiful place that I'm envisioning and those seeds that are happening are being planted in the now moment. So please uh, continue to tune in with me. If you have something that you are doing that you would like to share, uh, please definitely um, send me, hey, Kenya, how are you? Yay, and this is an, uh, Kenya Sewell Wood. You'll want to look up for um, Frugalistic Lupus Sister um, sharing about her journey on YouTube. I mean, there's so many people who are here speaking their truth, and I absolutely want to continue supporting that. But Kenya is sharing about her life and experience with many others who are also on the lupus journey. I follow her subscriptions in my sub YouTube subscriptions. Please check it out because she's living her life out loud in order to have um, share such deeply personal things about what it is like to live in a place where you're constantly challenged by your physical body. And so I, you know, acknowledge Kenya as well for being one of the light workers who I'm connected to, and I'm very honored about that. Um, Dr. Tracy J, as I said here, um, with Open Heart World, and she helps you with opening the layers of your heart to see what it is your heart wants you to know uh, so that you can um, reach a deep, deeper level of healing. And this, you know, so many times we have blocks in our energy that we don't oh, aren't aware of that are hindrances of our loving experience of all that is. So um, if I've missed anybody who is out here, Oh, yay, Trey. Okay, awesome. See, I know that you had posted some things about your parents, Trey, about CBD and how as uh, senior citizens or senior, the senior set, how incorporating it into their lifestyle um, was very helpful for them as well in terms of their body health and healing. So I'm not surprised about the connection between other um, autoimmune and body pain type things with CBD. So definitely, Trey, I will be circling back with you a lot sooner rather than later um, about the knowledge that you can share about CBD health and healing because we are absolutely in this time and place. Um, oh, yay. <laughs> Kenya says she just took a CBD gummy. Okay. Oh, and Medewa, thank you for joining me. Uh, if anyone is interested in supporting your energy with Oregon, Saw Oregon Energy Organite, um, Golden Era Creations is my favorite Organite uh, source. I do get organized for other places, but Medewa has my heart. She's like my first um, person who introduced me to uh, Oregon Pieces and Golden Era Creations. You can catch them at Atlantic Station, uh, I believe on the weekends as part of their artist market. And what these are is a combination of metal tailings, uh, crystals, and resin that creates a certain energetic field. And it is amazing. She's able to demonstrate for you how it affects your energy body. Um, it helps repel uh, negative things. I usually keep an organite necklace on. Lately, I've just been wearing my Laramar or Atlantis stone. But I do try to keep um, some of her organite or organ in my environment, please do check out Golden Era Creations as well. And Trey, are you still with Ace? Uh, are you still with Ace as a product line? Is that your... Um... Okay, yeah, he started to do some teaching here about gummies are cool, but they have the least uh, BOO available because of the digestive system and the breakdown in the liver. Okay, so bioavailability. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we're going to have a conversation very soon because 
Uh, so much of what we do in terms of vitamins and uh, digestion and absorption of things is not just with CBD, but I'm even seeing now multivitamin companies that are not doing pills. They're doing actual food nuggets that are compressed nutritional things such as spirulina and uh, you know, it's so much of what we've done that is, um, oh, yes, <laughs> so much of what we've done is uh, constructed. And so if we can move to a more natural and organic place of being without all the chemicals and all the Frankenstein stuff that happens to us, uh, I think that we'll be better off. It's interesting because I was watching a show uh, earlier this week, uh, Gordon Ramsay, I think, and he's now doing something similar to what Anthony Bourdain was doing where he's out in the world doing stuff. And he was in Peru, I think, and he was climbing on the side of a mountain getting a cactus. And they were talking about the word organic. And it's like organic means nothing in places where food is just part of what you do, what you grow around your hat, your hut, or your home or in your backyard garden. The whole thing of organic is such an Americentric kind of um Oh, live box on Instagram. That let's live box on Instagram. Okay, awesome. Let's live box. Oh yes, I remember you launched that. Uh, I think you launched that with your wife. Did you launch that with your wife a few months ago? Try. Oh, sorry. It's kind of like a, a attention deficit <laughs> experience when you're talking and then chatting at the same time. So it is what it is. That's why we come to these lives. But, you know, the whole idea that something is organic when in our basic natural state, we're growing something and the chicken running in the yard that has just been eating or the goat that's been just eating, of course, it's organic because it's been living and then it becomes part of our food <laughs> or the tree has been growing in our backyard and it becomes part of our food to have avocados and things, you know. So, uh, you know, it's very, very interesting that we have to be told this food was grown without chemicals, without genetic modification. Um, that's one reason why I love to go to Mexico uh, when I go for periods of time, because it is... Um, very different and the kinds of food like when I went in the supermarket I saw this carrot and that carrot was like this big around it was all gnarly and dirty and there was like a whole bin of them right and I was like oh that's what carrots used to look like like when I was growing up and my parents would have the garden and we'd pull them out you know they looked like ugly things not the uniform pretty orange pieces of flavorless carrot product that we call carrots today. And so when you step outside of the U.S. experience or outside of the urban U.S. experience or into places where like a Sevenanda, the local food co-op here in uh, the United States, um, where you can um, purchase better foods. You know, it's definitely not the whole foods corporate type thing. It's a local food co-op. So you can step outside of the bubble and, you know, uh, basically connect yourself with more natural and organic um, from the earth, watered, grown, seeded things. And so if you get a chance to do that, step out of your bubble, or if that's part of your reality, I have family in Kansas who are all farming and who are living off the earth. And I'll tell you, I'm not a big beef person, but my uncle and the cows that he grows and that he then butchers and the beef products that my parents receive as part of that don't taste anything like what I've eaten from the supermarket. And because I know, A, his energy in terms of what he farms with, my cousin and her husband, like the energy of their heart that they're actually putting, that my grandparents, this is a heritage lineage of farming and bringing produce to the world. It's of a different frequency than like a commercial 
buff, you know, uh, cow slaughter yard. You know, it's the same process, the same outcome, yet it's different energetically. So, uh, you know, anyway, just my little rant about the idea of organicness. Hey, Daryl, travels by Daryl. I love everybody who's popping on. Everybody who is here is really people who are vibrating at the same frequency where you have stepped out into like a different way of living and are embodying your truth. You know, um, Diwa with her organite, Daryl with travel by Daryl, like helping people step out of their framework, change their latitude, change their attitude. Trey with uh, not only bringing body health and healing, but also partnering with his wife in like a very real way to live a dream energy together. And, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Tracy with looking at the layers of love. It's just so beautiful. And I feel so fortunate to be connected with everybody that I am. And since this has been about a 45 minute conversation, I will go ahead and get ready to wrap it up today. But I will be back uh, regularly for these kinds of interactions. And I appreciate everyone who's come today. If you want to post anything in the comments here, a link to your business, please feel free to do so. And I will do whatever I can to amplify the message of your positive vibration as well. Don't forget to join me later today on my YouTube. Um, it'll probably be in the evening time hours. I don't know. It just kind of depends on when my guidance comes to go ahead and do that. <laughs> so I'm really grateful for the technology that actually worked as anticipated today for the smooth road that this was in order to bring the first sprout of this intentional seed into visibility. So I absolutely wish for you all of the blessings that you could have to overflowing and that that overflow spills out of your arms into the world around you to bless others. Know that the light in me absolutely honors the light in you. Namaste.